We're in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. I want you to put your finger there. We're going to start with a really tough passage of scripture about lying in Revelation chapter 21. We're talking about the revelation in the 930 Bible class. This is for the very end of it. <clears throat> revelation 21 beginning in verse 6. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. When I was a little boy, I really, really enjoyed telling a good story. My dad coined the phrase, he said, you'd rather climb a tall tree and tell a lie as to stand on the ground and tell the truth. And it was deserved. I, I was that way. Uh, just this last week, I had Bootsy for a day. Bootsy and I were hanging out. And then, I don't know if you've noticed our cat that has adopted the building. It's here all the time. I call him Goldie. You can call him whatever you want if you'll take him home. Uh, but Goldie hangs around the building. And I, I told Bootsy that Goldie lives completely on eating five-year-old little girls. Uh, <laughs> She knew it wasn't true, so it doesn't really count as a lie, but uh, we say things that we wish were true that aren't. We say things that we hope to make true that sometimes we can't make true. I don't think that that's what the Creator had in mind when He said all liars will have their place in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, that second death. But when I was a little kid, they, there was a song. Anybody know the song, Revelation 21a? It's, it's to a catchy tune. Revelation, Revelation 21a, 21a. Liars go to hell, liars go to hell. You will too, you will. My sister sang me that song. Um, the, there's a difference between being a liar and being someone who is misinformed and shares an untruth. There's a difference between being a liar and between somebody who tells you something that they believe to be true or wish was true but never comes to fruition. Let me give you a few illustrations and then we'll get into the text. Parents will tell you things that are not true. They'll tell you what they want to be true. But maybe you're not the prettiest child that ever lived. Um, we had a good friend who got married before we did and had a little girl, I think. And the job is they show you their baby and you say, oh, isn't she the cutest thing? No, she really wasn't. It was the ugliest baby I've ever seen. My grandmother tells the story that when I was born, she begged the nurse not to take me in to show me to my mother. So... You know, but we say things that we wish were true, that we want to be true. We sometimes tell our kids things that are not true, good-naturedly, with a good heart. Uh, the school will tell you things that are not true. Like if you pass all of these classes, you'll be successful in life. No. You'll get a piece of paper like everybody else. And maybe you'll do well, maybe you won't do well, but... Uh, there are no guarantees, so you do what you can, at, when you can, while you can, where you can. The culture will flat lie to you when they say you can be anything you want to be. I'm five seven. <laughs> I'm not going to be anything I want to be. 
I was a decent tennis player, but even playing tennis, you have to be a little taller to get a good fast serve to come down over the net and land where it's supposed to land in the court. I wasn't going to be a basketball player, Linda. Uh, it, there's, it's just limiting what you can do and what you can't do uh, with physical attributes, who you are and who you might become. Uh, we live in a culture that's wide open and sure you can attempt anything you want to attempt, but you can't always be everything you want to be. Husbands and wives make lifelong promises to each other and then break them. Friends, pinky swear, will be friends forever. And then they get out of school and they wander apart. And I tried to check in with one of my doubles partners a couple of years ago. He was a year younger than us, graduated a year behind us. And evidently, he is a very important executive in a company somewhere and will not take my calls. People that you thought would always be your friends, right? It's not necessarily a lie. It's just not the truth. We don't need to lie. We want to tell people the truth. But we hold out hope sometimes it's not realistic. And then there are some people who just lie. Well, Paul was having a problem with some of his converts at Corinth concerning his travel plans. Now, hopefully you remember in July we were talking about the collection for the saints in Jerusalem. And Paul was letting folks know all around the Mediterranean basin that there was a need in Jerusalem and that he was going to take as much of this funding as he could collect with him to Jerusalem and turn it over to the church there so that they could use it. Uh, he had told the folks in Corinth that he wanted to come to them and then from there go up to Macedonia, go up to Philippi, spend some time with the church at Philippi, and then turn around and come back down and spend some more time at Corinth. So that was the, the game plan. That was what he wanted to do. But things didn't work out the way that he wanted them to. And so there was some clatter. There was some chatter. There was some hate talk in Corinth about Paul and about his character. Right? Here's Paul's answer. Uh, 2 Corinthians 1 beginning in verse 8. We don't want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters about the troubles we experienced in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death. This happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us again. On him we have set our hope, and he will continue to deliver us as you help us with your prayers. Many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favor that's been granted us in answer to the prayers of many. Now this is our boast. Our conscience testifies that we have conducted ourselves in the world and especially in our relationship with you with integrity and godly sincerity. We've done so relying not on worldly wisdom but on God's grace. For we do not write to you anything you cannot read or understand. And I hope that as you have understood us in part, you will come to understand fully that you can boast of us just as we will boast of you in the day of the Lord Jesus. I was confident of this. I wanted to visit you first so that you might benefit twice. I wanted to visit you on my way to Macedonia and to come back to you from Macedonia and then to have you send me on my way to Judea. Was I fickle when I intended to do this? Do I make my plans in a worldly manner so that in the same breath I say both yes, yes, and no, no? But as surely as God is faithful, our message to you is not yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who preached among you by us, by me and Silas and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him, it has always been yes. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, 
the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. <clears throat> now it is God who makes both us and you stand firm in Christ. He anointed us, set a seal of ownership on us, and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. I call God as my witness. I stake my life on it. <clears throat> that it was in order to spare you that I did not return to Corinth. Not that we lorded over your faith, but we work with you for your joy. It is by faith that you stand firm. <clears throat> Just want to uh, notice two important things from this passage. Number one, people will vote you up or down based on how truthful they think you are. If people believe you to be a truthful person, you are miles and miles ahead in your life. When you turn in an application for employment, a lot of times they ask for references. If the person checks their references, which they do, sometimes they don't, but if they check their references, one of the questions they should ask, what do you think about this person in terms of their honesty? Is this an honest human being? Is this a truthful person? <clears throat> I like the fact that they're good at their job. I like the fact that they went to the right school and got the right degree. But I want to know, if I hire this person and I bring them into our situation, if they're working for me, can I trust them? Are they going to do what I think they're doing? Are they going to be fulfilling their responsibilities without me having to watch uh, it's been said that character is who you are when nobody's watching. But people will notice and they will decide a lot of things about you based on whether they believe you to be truthful or not. Right now during the political season, lots of fact checking going on. Both sides of the what they said isn't true, and here's the video from 10 years ago. Uh, what they said isn't right, and what they what they said are the wrong numbers, and here's the right numbers. And on and on we will go, because the truth is reportedly important <coughs> to us. It wasn't Paul's fault that he couldn't keep his promise. He seems to have had every intention to do so. <clears throat> but the people who were angry with him didn't care about the circumstances. What they cared about was the outcome. Paul said he was coming, and he didn't show up. Perhaps one of the best modern-day uh, illustrations for this is parents who are ab not, I won't say absentee parents, but non-custodial parents. Right? And it is non-custodial parent A's turn to come for the weekend, and the weekend comes. It really doesn't matter what excuse you come up with. The child realizes, A, you're not there, and B, you're not there. All the rest of the clatter doesn't matter. You're either there or you're not. And they make a judgment based on your performance, not based on the reason behind it your performance. And here's a group of young people, young Christians who are waiting on the one who taught them and who led them and who discipled them. And he said he was going to come through here on his way to Macedonia and he didn't show up. Paul's a liar. Their heart was hurt and their anger was kindled. And Paul's reputation was at stake. And he cared care deeply about it. Some of my least favorite memes that show up on the Facebook are the ones that say, you can think anything you want to about me, I just don't care. You can say whatever you want, it doesn't matter. Paul would never have said that. What did Paul say? I have become all things to all people so that by all means I might save a few. Jesus said, if you want to be the master of all, become the servant of everybody. It's important that we care how people view us. 
It's important that we care what people think about our honesty. If they think us to be untrue, is there anything we can do to change that? And so <clears throat> Paul writes to them and tries to explain to them that he was telling them the truth as he knew it, that circumstances got in his way, but that he wanted desperately to follow through on the things that he had promised, the plans that he had made, was just unable to do so. But Paul cared what people thought of it. That's the first thing we need to remember. And number two, whatever you think of the messenger, don't give up on the message. Paul reminds the Corinthians that when he preached to them, when Silas preached to them, when Timothy preached to them, and they talked about the goodness of God, and they talked about the grace of God, and they talked about eternal life in Jesus Christ, and they talked about his death and his burial and his resurrection, that it wasn't wishy-washy. It was fact. And the, the, the problem that they saw in Paul, well, maybe Paul's dishonest, his biggest fear was not that they wouldn't like him. His biggest fear was that they wouldn't listen to the message. And he says, I want you to know that the message we preached to you was not yes and no. It wasn't well made. It was absolute. And the truth of the gospel remains, even if you don't think I'm truthful, even if you don't like me anymore, even if we've got personal problems, the truth of the gospel remains. So A, keep your reputation as strong as you can. Care what people think about you and share a gospel with them that is so high above any of our own personalities and our own abilities that they'll have something to hang on to even in those times and in those situations when we fall short of their expectations. God's promises are always yes, not yes and no. We serve a God who has told us some things that are hard to believe. He told us that he loved us. This is the creator of the universe. The one who said, let there be, and it was. The one who looked down and saw that all the thoughts and intentions of every man's heart was only on evil all the time. Sent a flood and wiped them all out down to Noah and his family. And then sin returned. Sin was rampant. Sin was even in his own people of Israel. And he just kept saying, I'm going to bring Messiah. I'm going to bring the Savior. I'm going to bring someone who can get you out of this situation that you can't get out of on your own. And he sent his one-of-a-kind son, allowed human beings like you and me, stupid, uninformed, self-centered, sinful human beings, to crucify him, to beat him up, to spit on him, to cut him, to bleed him, and to hang him on a tree. And then he raised him from the dead. Do you believe that? Jesus told Mary and Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. If a man believes in me and dies, he'll live again. And if a man believes in me, he'll never die. Do you believe that? And Mary said, oh, yes, Lord, I believe that. It's hard to believe. Isn't it? It's beyond our human imagination that the God of all creation would love us enough to sacrifice his son for us so that we could have eternal life in him. But it's always yes. It's always true. It was true at the moment it happened. It was true when the stone was rolled away. And it's just as true today as it was then. And it'll be true 10,000 times 10,000 years from now in eternity. Because the truth of God never changes. You'll meet people in your life who will flat lie to you. You'll meet people in your life that are misinformed and will give you bad information. But the truth of the gospel, the simple, unadulterated truth of the gospel remains. Hang on to that in the middle 